muted. I was muted. Sorry. <laughs> what a great start. Hi, everybody. Welcome to week two of the uh, JavaScript boot camp, this time for real, this time without muting. How fun. Hope everybody's doing wonderfully. Hope everybody had a wonderful weekend. Um, I just want to take a moment, if I may, and say, you know, congratulations on doing the first week. Congratulations on making it this far. Congratulations on starting your JavaScript learning journey or continuing down it. Let's take a moment, if I may, and let's all pat ourselves on the back. Huh? I think we've, I've kind of gotten the feeling that people like doing that with me. So let's do it. Pat, pat. <laughs> yeah. Hope everybody's doing well. Hope everybody learned a lot last week. Just a couple of reminders before we start. First of all, just bear in mind, um, ah, it's so good to see everybody saying hello, Pat Pat. Uh, it's great to see you all here. Um, just a couple reminders um, before we start. Uh, we've got um, some recordings going up. So as these lessons go, you will be, um, you will be, I hope, every, I hope, hope my microphone is sounding okay, by the way. Um, so uh, you, these recordings will go up as we go live. And they will be on YouTube. So if you fall behind, don't worry. You will get the all of the recordings through the Class Central Bootcamp website. Uh, if my assistant could please highlight that at the bottom for us. And um, yeah, go oh, good evening. Yeah, everybody from around the world. How exciting! Um, so yeah, uh, yeah. First of all, recordings are going up, so don't worry. If you ever get stuck on any of the exercises, please consult the forum. You'll find the forum here on Class Central. Uh, you'll also find the Discord through here. If you want to chat on Discord, I'm there way more than I should be, but I'm also in the forums to answer any questions that you all might have. And yeah, remember, we've got the Class Central Bootcamp. If you're tuning in live and you're like, ooh, what is this? This looks fun. We're right here. So that's my pre-babble. <laughs> Let's hop right in and have a look at where we are so far, because we were learning some JavaScript, and we're about to continue with that. So last week, we ended up learning if statements and greater than and lesser than and all that. Uh, ooh, hello, Lagos, Nigeria. Good to, good to see folks tuning in from there, from Uganda. Wonderful. From UK. Hey, hey. Um, so I gave everybody some homework. And the homework was to do all of the exercises up until here, right, right up until and including counting cards couple things. First, if you didn't make it that far, don't worry. There's time. We're all in this together. Hey, from Zimbabwe, good to see you. Um, yeah, from Brazil. Hey, hey. Um, yeah, um, if you haven't made it that far, don't worry. We're going to catch up together. And at the end of this lesson, just before the q and I'm going to do the counting cards exercise with all of you together. So don't stress. We will get there. Everything is going to be fine. So <laughs> let's hop right in and start doing some JavaScript exercises. And today we're hopping right in. Today is the last time that we'll be doing the JavaScript fundamentals. So we're going to get as far as we can throughout all of the rest of these exercises, all the way, look at all what we're going to do for today, all the way down to recursion. If we don't make it that far today, we're going to catch up with homework for tomorrow. And tomorrow we'll kick off with ES6. More on that later. So without further ado, let's Hop right into building JavaScript objects. Now, if you've gone ahead with the homework, uh, if you've gone ahead and pushed forward with the exercises, that's fantastic. If you haven't, that's also fantastic because we're going to do that today together. Hope everybody's got a glass of water to stay hydrated. Folks, if you've got any questions, please save them for the end. We're going to do Q&A right after. So let's talk about objects. Now, if you haven't heard of objects before, you might have seen them here and there. What they are is a collection of data saved inside one variable, inside one value. So we can sort of take this object, this box, and fill it with lots of different what are called key and value pairs. Let's take a look here on the left. We've got an object called the variable is called cat. It's a constant, so we can't change its immediate value. And this constant ha holds an object. And this object is denoted with curly brackets. You might have seen those around if statements and functions. We also use them for objects. So our curly friends are going to help us here. So this 
object is a variable called cat that has four values. And each value is denoted by a key, which is this on the left. It's also called a property. And on the right is the value. So this value, this object cat has four objects. So sorry, four values inside of it. One has the property name called, and the value is whiskers. We got one called legs, value is four. One is called tails, value is one. And we got enemies, which is an array, because this can be any kind of object, uh, any kind of value, pardon me. And this one's called water and dogs. So what we can do, uh, as you know, we've got here a definition for a constant called my dog, and it's an empty object. You see, if there's nothing inside except for the comments, but remember our computer ignores those comments, those are the post-it notes for us. This, is, this object has no keys and values, so it's empty. Let's console log that and confirm. Console log my dog. And you'll see the curly brackets tells us this is empty. Totally fine. Let's add our first one. So we're going to use the quote brackets to denote the string. So the, the values, sorry, the properties will always be strings. Name, um, we're going to need a colon for that. And then we're going to give it the value. Uh, let's go with uh, let's go with my my old dog's name, Fred. So now we can see in the console log, we have an um, we have a, a, a an object with one key value pair. One is name. The the sorry the key or property is name, and the value is Fred. But again, this doesn't have to be a, a string. It can be a number. That doesn't make much sense. But you can do that. Um, it can be an array. Of, let's say let's say it has lots of names. Fred, good boy. I did call Fred good boy. So there you see name with an array. It can be any value. So yes, it can even be a boolean. Ugh. It can be true. And if we want to add another property, all we got to do is add a comma and just name another. Uh, 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 legs. So how many legs does a dog have? Well, they, most dogs have four legs. So we're going to go with that. So now we can see name is true <laughs> and legs is four. So that's how that works. And we can name as many properties and key value pairs as we want. So let's jump right into the exercise. Let's make an object that represents a dog called my dog, which contains the properties name, legs, tails, and friends. You can also set those object properties to whatever values you want, as long as name is a string, legs and tails are numbers, and friends is an array. So let's, choose, let's do just that. First one, name, we're gonna go, we're gonna stick with Fred. Go with any name you like. Let's go with legs, there's four. Next line, tails is gonna be one. And friends, is going to be, Fred has two friends. They're called Fiona and Mochi. So again, let's, let's print this out here. The name is Fred. We got an object with four properties. Name is Fred. Legs is four. Tails is one. And friends is Fiona and Mochi. So that's how that works. So. Again, this is a variable, which means it can be defined with const, it can be defined with let, it can be defined with var. Oh, and I forgot to put in my quote marks. <laughs> Silly me, sorry about that. So, this is how you define, uh, this is how you define an object. So as long as we're good to go, Let's see, check again. This should be everything we need. Remember folks, if you're falling behind or if you have any questions, Totally ask those questions. We're going to do answer all of them at the end of the session. So let's run our tests. And we're good to go. Pat, pat, 73%. Let's keep going. So now we're going to learn how to access those properties inside an object. Let's take a look at what, which, as what this means. Let's console log test object here. So this object has three values. One is called hat, which has a value ball cap, shirt, which is, has a value jersey, and shoes, which has a value cleats, which is a type of shoe. Now, 
what we're learning in this lesson is that we can access the whoops inside we can access the value inside those objects by passing the number dot sorry the <laughs> the character dot and then the name of the key so let's say we want to get the shirt all we got to do is test object dot shirt now notice unlike a function we're not doing the bracket the brackets test dot shirt is not a function because what we're doing is accessing a property now, if you remember length from arrays and strings, that's where this comes in. Length is a property of a string. Length is a property of an array. And shirt is a property of our test object. So hope that makes sense. Let's read in the property values of test object using dot notation. Set the variable hat value equal to the object's property hat and set the variable shirt value to equals to the pro object's property shirt. Um, Kinjal saying, isn't this a, like a dictionary of sorts? And I think this is a very accurate statement. I think objects are like dictionaries. We're looking up in our dictionary what the value for something is. Um, somebody's asking, so then can objects contain another objects? I will say yes and hang in there because we're gonna get we're gonna get there in a bit. For now, let's stick and keep asking those questions. And remember, we'll answer all of them at the end of the session. So. Let's get right to the exercise. At value, we want test object dot hat. In fact, let me console log hat value and shirt value. Control and very important. So here we're printing out ball cap, which is good. And here we're printing out the object test object. So this isn't on line 10. We're not quite there yet. We need to access shirt. So test object dot shirt. Ball cap and jersey. This looks good. Let's run our tests. Yes, pat pat. Let's submit and go to the next challenge. So let's accessing object properties with bracket notation. So just like big, just like with accessing with dot notation, like we just did in the previous exercise, it's also possible to access properties of an object using square brackets. So. Let's um, scroll. Let's let's play around with this a little bit and see how we can do this. So console log test object. Now, let's try using dot notation to get the drink. Now, here's where we run into problems. The drink is going to give us an error because dot notation expects the name of the property to be one word, one camel case. This is why when we have spaces like we do here. We need another way to do it. And this other way to do it is with a uh, bracket notation. So let's do that. Let's put some brackets around the drink, or brackets. This is still going to give us an error. And that's because we need to actually call this with quote marks because it expects a string. There we go. So by console logging test object square brackets and then in a quote, the drink then we can access that property. And this is handy for when we want to be able to access a property that has strings in it, uh, pardon, uh, white spaces in it. So knowing that, you can see it's pretty similar to dot notation. It's just for accessing the properties. So let's scroll down and find out what the exercise is. Read the values of the properties and entree and the drink into entree value and drink value. Let's do that right away. And I'm gonna do that using my good buddy console log. We're going to print out entry value, comma, drink value. So now what we're getting, entry value, it has the value test object. So that's printing out the object. And we're printing out that object again, because these are both test object. So let's use bracket notation to get those values. First, we want an entry, remember, square brackets and quote marks for the string. And let's do it here for the drink, which is called the drink. The drink. Now we can see an entree is hamburger, which is printed correctly here. And for drink, we have water, which is printed correctly here. So there we go, using square bracket notation to access values. Let's see that the tests pass. Yes! Pat pat. I almost forgot which hand to pat pat with. <laughs> it's been a while. All right, let's move on. We're doing great, everybody. Now, we can also use variables to access uh, properties of a um, of an object. But here you might notice something. Hold on. 
This isn't a string. Let's play around with this and see what's going on. Um, let's console log test object and then the number 12. We're still accessing this using type coercion. What if we do it with a string? It still works because remember from last time, type coercion is saying, okay, let's try and get these two to match. So even though 12 is a number here, if we print out test object, you can see it's being coerced into a string. It's changing its type into a string for storing this object. Take a quick sip of water. All right. Now, now what's cool about this is that we can actually use we can use variables to access those values as well. I'll show you what I mean in just a moment. Let's say we want to access this value here, uh, unitas. Let's let uh, no. Let's go with const. Uh, let's go with const. Uh, let's call this property equals nineteen. Now we can what we can do is pass this since it's a string since it's a value. We can use bracket notation to access that property of the object. Here we go unitas. Um, ooh, Diego is doing one here. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Test object dot twelve. Let's try that. What happens if we use dot notation? So, because this is an invalid name for 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 a variable, a variable can't have the number twelve. It needs to begin with a letter. Then we get undefined. But if we do bracket notation, no problem. If we use a variable, no problem, because this is still a value to be passed in. So let's see what our exercise is. Set the player number variable to 16. Let's do this in order. Set the player to 16. Done. Then use it, use a variable to look up the player's name and assign it to player. So player number. Let's console log that to be safe. Uh, player. And we get Montana, which if we look here is the correct value. So Ooh, ooh, ooh. Saravana makes a good one. What if we do test object dot 12 with a string? That is not a property call. See, I'll, I'll show you what I mean. Test object 12. We can't, this needs to be, so the dot, not, the dot notation needs to have an, uh, a, var a variable like name, like a camel case like name. So if I do 12, oh, sorry, if I do, for, let's, let's add a new one here. Uh, 20. I uh, forgot my string. 20. Georgina. Then if we call 20, that works. I hope that, hope that clarifies things. Now that we're printing this out correctly, let's delete this last players. And fingers crossed, we've done it. Yep. Pat, pat. Let's move on. Okay. Now we're going to talk about um, updating object properties. So if we want to be able, just like with an array, remember how with an array we could change the value at a certain index. We can do the same with objects, even though this is a const. Remember from last week what we, what we learned. Uh, <laughs> remember what we learned last week with const. We, can, the, we can't change the value of this variable, but we can change the contents of the object. So let's keep going. Um, look, we got a, my dog here. We can we got name coder, legs four, tails one, friends, free code camp campers. Ah, dogs are everybody's friends. <laughs> so uh, let's um, let's update the value. So let's do a console log log of my dog. And we got coder, legs four, tails one, friends, free code camp campers. So um, here's what we can do. We can use dot notation or bracket notation, you'll see in a moment, to change the val to change values inside that object. I'll show you what I mean. My dog dot name is equals to Gerald. I'm reusing names from last week. <laughs> I just like the letter G. Um, so now you can see if I print out my dog, the name has been changed to Gerald. It's no longer coder. coder. So that's how that works. And we can change that for any property. Legs. 
legs. So the name is now Coder and the legs is now Gerald. Doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, we can do an array. Again, this can be any value. We can also do this with bracket notation. See, my dog legs is Gerald. And there you can see updated it just the same. So that's how that's how changing the value of of of, of an object works. Sorry, I don't know why I lost. <laughs> so update the dog's object name property. Let's change her name from coder to happy coder. Oh, I like that. You can use either dot or bracket notation. So let's go with dot. I like dot notation. If I can use it, I prefer to use it. It's personal thing. So happy coder. You see, that's already done. And I should pay attention to the instructions because it says only change the code below this line. There we go. Give it a test. Yes, pat, pat. Let's keep going. 77% of the way, folks. We can do this. Whew. So we can add new properties as well. Same way as before. Let's give it a try. Uh, console log my dog. Got a very similar object from before. So uh, let's, let's let's add a new a new property. Uh, toys. Um, I think this would be an array. Balls. Yeah, there we go. So now I've set with the dot notation, and this can be again with either dot or bracket notation to be to set that value. So name, legs, tails, friends, and now toys. So that's how that works. <laughs> I like JavaScript more than Python. I'll admit I haven't done a lot of Python myself. I I don't know if I prefer one over the other. <laughs> so um, so that's how we can add an object. So if it doesn't exist, it just adds it. Totally how that works. So let's um, add a bark property to dog and set it to a dog sound such as woof. Okay, uh, let's do that. Uh, bark. And let's go with bork. <laughs> I like bork. <laughs> Sun says your voice sounds like Kevin Hart. I... I'll take that as a compliment. Thank you. <laughs> um, so now we've got, now we can see the bark property is set to bork. And that's how you set a new property. Run our, oh, let's try it with bracket notation just for funsies. Same deal. Bark is set to bork. <laughs> so that's how we set a property. Let's run our tests. Yes. Pat, pat. Next, let's now we can let's find out how to delete objects from a, uh, properties from a JavaScript object. Let's play around with that real quick. Console log my dog. I love console logging. So we can see there we've got our dog with all of our properties. Let's delete one. Let's say um, let's say let's delete uh, my dog dot bark like we're doing here in the example. Now you're going to see the object has been modified to no longer have that bark property. What happens if we try doing something that doesn't exist? Mm, barks, for example. The object doesn't get changed. So if it doesn't exist, it's not going to throw an error, but it won't change because, of course, it doesn't have one a property called barks. So that's how that works. So delete the tails property from my dog. You may use either bracket or dot notation. Let's do it, um, but this time with bracket notation, just to have some variety. So now we got happy coder, legs four, friends, and bark. No tails. It's a weird thing to say. And because we're good citizens, we're going to follow the instructions and put that below this line. So that's how that works. Run the tests. Yep. Part pat. Let's keep going. Did I just say part pat? Yes, maybe. <laughs> Um, could I please, oh, could I please make the console log area bigger? Yes, of course. Hope that's better. Um, okay. So uh, using objects for lookups. So what are we doing here? Objects can be thought of as a key value storage, like a dictionary. If you have 
tabular data, you can use object to look up values rather than a switch statement or an if else change chain. We did the switch statements during the homework and if last week and else during the homework as well. We'll cover that again, so don't worry. So let's take a look at what our exercise is here. Let's convert this switch statement into an object called lookup. Ah, so what we can do is use objects to be able to look things up. Let's take a look at what we mean. So let's first define an, uh, an object to match this switch statement. This is going to be a little bit funky, so bear with me, folks. So what we're doing here is um, let uh, results equals, I'm just going to call it results, and it's going to be an object. So we're going to define our first object. So for each, each case statement, we can define a value for a key. This is what we mean by using an object instead of a switch statement. So alpha, if I could spell, would have the value atoms. Next one, Bravo will have the value Austin. Let's keep going, Charlie will have the value Chicago. Let's see what else we got. Delta will be Denver. Delta will be Denver. Echo will be easy. Will be easy. Foxtrot will be Frank. Foxtrot will be Frank. Now, before I put cement this, let's take a look at what's happening here. If we let's console log our phonetic lookup. So we're going to look up Charlie. And that gives us Chicago based on this switch. Let me just delete what I did here real quick. I'm sorry, folks. I got a little bit ahead of myself. So we're going to let result equals empty string. And depending on what val is, the val is the parameter up here, we're going to set it to be either Adams, Boston, Chicago, Denver, Easy, and or Frank. So if we look up Charlie, it looks up in the switch statement. OK, d -d 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 Charlie. And then it returns, sets the result to be Chicago. So that's how that works. Let's, let's delete the contents of all of this. <laughs> so now our, our function is empty. Let's have it do the same thing. So we've got our results, Adams, Bravo, Charlie, and so on and so forth. And we will return results now. Remember, what we're doing here is saying, OK, Depending on the value, let's look up in our object which value is assigned to our um, is assigned to our object. So if, if we put in uh, Charlie, it'll go okay. Let's see Val. Let's see Bravo, Charlie, Delta, Echo, Foxtrot. <laughs> you like my keyboard? I can show it at the end during the Q and A. But for now, gotta focus. So so um, yeah. So we're using that to look up which value is assigned to which property of that object. Um, so we've got results, and we're going to return results object with the value for the property val, which we assign here to be Charlie, but we can make it alpha. Give us us atoms. Let's try echo. This is easy. Easy should be capitalized. Easy. There we go. And so on and so forth. Oh, use it to look up and assign the associated string to the result variable. You're absolutely right. I did not read the instructions. My mistake. So let result equal. And we will copy this and paste it here. And then we will return result. Use it to look at val and assign the associated string to the result variable. This looks good. We have an error here because I didn't remove my semicolons. <laughs> I am all over the place today. So again, object, lookup. Return. Let's run the tests. Yes, pat pat, 80%. We got this, folks. Now, we can we can what we can do is ask an object, hey, do you have a property and get a Boolean in return? Now, remember, Booleans have one of two values, true 
or false. Let's try this out. Uh, let's let's ignore this function for now. Let's console log. Um, let's define an object real quick. Object, and let's set it to be name. Oh, I keep forgetting my string name. I'm going to go with Fred, dear Fred. So uh, let's console log object. Is an object with the name Fred. If we do object.name, it gives us Fred. But what if we want to test if, whether this property name exists in object? For that, we can use has own property. So has own property. Then we'll need to give it as a as a as an um, argument the name of the key. So in this case, name. We're saying, hey, can you print out a Boolean for whether the object has the property name? It's true. Legs, false. This object does not have the property legs. Does it have the property Fred? What do we think? No, it does not. It has a value Fred for the name, for the property name. It's a bit confusing. <laughs> so again, we're testing whether it has this property included. What if we add legs? Let's add legs. Legs. And let's test for that property. Now it has it. We get true. Again, if we don't, false. So that's how looking up a property works. Now let's look at our function. Delete all my code. Modify the function check object. Let's see. Uh, right now it just has return. It takes two parameters. One is an object and one, are, one is a check prop. And it just returns change me. So we're going to need to change this. To test if an object passed to the fun function, obj. So the obj is going to be the object, contains a specific property, check prop. So check prop is going to be the property we're testing. If the property is found, return that property's value. If not, return not found. OK. Let's just break this down a little bit. Um, let's define our own variable. Let's uh, let, no, sorry, const has prop equals object has own property and the property itself, which is check prop. Let's return has prop just for now, for ourselves, for testing. Let's uh, const dog equals name the uh, name Fred. And let's console log check obj object uh, sorry dog and the property will be name so what we're doing here is a very roundabout way of saying okay call this function pass in the object and the name as arguments so this is now the art the object and this is the name property we assign to this variable true or false and we return that property true or false but that's only part of the exercise Let's take a look again. If the property is found, return that property's value. So let's do an if statement, which we learned last week. If has prop, remember that's a Boolean, so that can be either true or false. We will return um, that property's value. So that will be object. And remember to look it up, we use the bracket notation, check prop. Now look what we get. As it's there, console log check object dog name is now returning Fred because we're returning the value of that property. Otherwise, return not found. So let's use else. Anybody did? If you did the homework, you'll know the else. That that's what's going to be run if if this is not true. Else return not found. And if you didn't do the if you didn't get that far, don't worry. We're going to cover that in the Q and A as well. So let's try this again. If the property is there, return object property value. Otherwise, return not found. Cool. Now, um, console log. Folks, if you, um, remember, I'm going to stick around for a Q&A, so ask all your questions at the end, please. Um, yeah, let's try a different one here, because this is returning Fred, which is accurate. Let's try legs now. Not found. That's how that works. Let's give it a try. 
Yes! Pat, pat! All right. Let's keep at it. Who? We can also manipulate complex objects. So let's take a look at this object here on the right. We've got an object with one, two, three, four, five values. Artist, title, release year, formats, and gold. One of them is an array. And as you can see, that array can go over multiple lines. It's the same as having that array on the same line. This is just a little bit more straightforward to read. Just very important at the end of that value to have the comma. Yeah? So what are we doing in this one? Let's read our exercise first. Add a new album to the My Music Array. Oh, how accurate. I forgot to see that this is an array. So this, oh, why is my screen no longer being shared? Sorry about that. Let's bring it back. Sorry, folks. Um, again, let's take a look at this. Um, let's take a look at this array. So this, this is an array with one object inside it. Let's console log it. My music. Make this a little bigger for now. So, artist, title, release year, formats, and gold. And remember, this is an array with one object inside it, just one. So what if we wanted to add another album to it? Well, remember, an array is separated by commas. So all we got to do is add a comma after our object and just add a new object. So let's do just that. Um, artist... Oh, goodness, I'm so bad at this. Uh, uh, oh, no. Oh, no, I'm frozen. I'm so bad at music. Um, let's go with an imaginary one. Uh, George. <laughs> the artist is called George. The title of the album will be Going Home. Oh, Imagine Dragons. Let's go with Imagine Dragons. Thanks for the suggestion, Yes, <laughs> Imagine Dragons. <laughs> Real imaginary band. Oh, it's a band. My bad. So, title, cool album. Release year. Uh, release year. Notice the underscore, eh? Uh, let's make this nine. 2022. Um, release here and a formats array of strings. Okay, let's go with formats. And again, let's add, oh, it's an array of strings. So we're going to go with, uh, let's go with MP3. Uh, stream. And cassette. It's cassettes. Those are fun. So let's print it out. Here we got, we got one object here, which is Billy Joel, all good there. Then we've got another object here that we've added with the artist Imagine Dragons. Title is Cool Album, release year is 2022, and the format is MP3, stream, and cassette inside an array. So that's how we comma separate those objects inside an array. Whew, that's a big one. Hopefully we did this right. Let's run our tests. Fingers crossed. Yep. Pat, Pat, ah, I'm so glad I got to show on stream that I don't know anything about music. <laughs> okay. Aha. Now, somebody was asking earlier about nested objects. Now, what's going on here is that you can have an object inside an object. Can you believe it? Let's give it a try. Console, let's console log my storage. Take a look at what we've got here. So here we've got... An, ob uh, an object with one key, car. That's our property. And that property car has a value of an object, right? <laughs> so it goes quite deep down. So inside, sorry. So this pro object has two properties. One is inside and the other one is outside. So inside is has a value of another object. So we're we're like, two, three objects down inside. And this inside object is made up of two values, glove box, which has a value of maps and passenger seat, which is made up of, which has a value of crumbs. <laughs> I don't drive, but if I did drive, I would probably have crumbs on my driver's seat as well. <laughs> I like to snack. 
<laughs> so, and we've got another value here called outside, property called outside, which itself is an object, which has one property trunk and one value jack. So that's quite something, isn't it? So we want to assign the contents of the glove box property to the glove box contents variable, which I can see here is undefined. Before we do that, let's explore going into an object. <laughs> and some folks are talking about inception. It's not too inaccurate, I would say, because we can access an object inside an object inside an object. We'll get there. So my storage dot car will give us the the inside the the contents of the object car. But in that car, we can use dot notation again inside. Well, let's go with outside for fun to add, access this object, which is made up of trunk and jack. And if we want to access the value of trunk, you guessed it, we got to call trunk. Now, here's the thing. You're probably wondering, can I only do dot notation? Absolutely not. You can also do a combination of bracket and dot notation. So my storage access car dot outside dot trunk. So that's how that works. So far, so good, I hope. Again, don't worry if this is all over the place. This is meant to be saved on YouTube and you can exercise and try and see if you can um, try and like rock it from what we're doing here. It'll take some time and some practice, but we'll all get there. And remember, use the forums, use the Discord. If my assistant could throw up the, uh, the Discord link, please. And as well as the forums. Cool. So we want to access Glovebox property to the Glovebox content. So let's take a look. It's in the my storage variable. So my storage access the car object, our property. Inside that, we want to access the inside property. Then we want to access the Glovebox property, but there's a white space there. So we can't do that with. This is why we have that difference. We can't do it with dot notation. We got to do it with bracket notation. Glove box. Let's console log glove box contents. Uh, glove box contents. Whew. That gave us maps, which is what we wanted. So my storage dot card dot inside access glove box. Let's run the test and see. Yes, pat pat. Let's submit and move on. Hoo hoo. We can do the same with accessing nested arrays. Let's take a look at what we got here. We've got a my plants, which is an array made up of one, two objects. The first one is this object here, which has type and list. And the second one is this object here, which also has type and list. Now, we learned last week how to access um, the insides of arrays. We can do that with indices, with, with the index. Let's console log, I don't even remember the name of the variable anymore. My plants. My plants. We get our big array here made up of two objects. Let's also. Let's get that first object. Remember, we can do this with the array, with the square brackets. And then we need the index, which, remember, starts at 0. So if we want the first value, we want the one at the 0 index. Cool. Type flowers list rose tulip dandelion, which is the first object. Whew. But what if we want to, now that we've got it access to it here, we can also get a, um, Sorry, my, my brain seems to have skipped a beat. Um, we can access the property using either dot or bracket notation. Let's try bracket notation just for funsies. Uh, let's get the type property. Now, we see here, my plants is the array. We access the first value, which is an object. And then in that object, we access the type uh, property, which gives us flowers. But what if we want list? Same thing. Now we've got an array. Now, yes, we can keep going in deeper. We can access a member of that array. Let's say we want the second one. So we would need the square brackets for our index, and we need the index itself. So if we want the second one, we want it at position one. 
Tulip. Hoo-hoo. What have we done here? Array. Get the first member. Get the... Ah, sorry, the hovering is <laughs> throwing me off a little bit. Um, the property at list. And then the second member of that list. So we went, again, kind of inception, inside, inside, inside. So that's how accessing nested arrays works, as well as nested objects. Using dot and bracket notation, set the variable second tree to the second item in the trees list, trees list from the my plants object. Okay, let's do that. So let's console log second tree. So where were we? Uh, we want to access my plants. The second item in the trees list. So we want the second object. So we'll use bracket notation one to get the second object. Then we want uh, in the trees list. So we want the list. So we want dot list. Remember, we can use either um, bracket or dot notation. And then we want the second item, which is pine. So we'll use, remember it's an array, so we can access that with bracket notation, pine. So my plants array, second object, get the list property, which is an array, get the second object in that array, get, get a second item in that array. Phew, okay. That is how we do it. And again, this can be either bracket or dot notation. We'll get to questions in the end. We've got about 10 minutes left. I hope we can manage at least as much as we can. So let's run the tests. Fingers crossed. Yes, pat, pat. Let's keep going. Ooh, now we've got a record collection. So let's take a look. We've got an object here made up of several records. Ah, me being ignorant about music again. So we've got an object made up of several, several properties. Uh, yes, those properties are 2548, 2468, 1245, and 5439. Each of these is an object. Object. Object and object. Whoopsie. And these have several properties inside them. Album title, artist, tracks. And these are all strings or arrays. Album title, artist, tracks. Artist and tracks. No album title. That's fine. And this one has just an album title. So we've got a function called update records, records ID prop and value. So it takes the records, which is the object, the ID, which is the ID. I'm guessing this is this property here, the property of that record that we want to change, and the value that we want to set it to be. So containing the musical album collection, an ID, a prop, like artist or tracks, and a value. Let's complete the function using the rules below to modify the object passed to the function. Um, question that I'm going to answer very quickly. Why are the properties here not strings? They're actually coerced into strings. We covered that early in the lesson. Let me console log records. Uh, it's called record collection, my mistake. Collection. Have a look. So even though we don't define it as a string, it's coerced into a string. I hope that clarifies. Ah, sorry if I'm typing too fast, folks. <laughs> um, now, where were we? Um, yes. Complete the function using the rules below to modify the object passed to the function. Remember, we're going to be putting these on YouTube. And they're going up on YouTube as we speak. So if you fall behind, be sure to catch up and ask questions on the forums or Discord. Now, your function must always return the entire record collection object, which it does here. So we're already doing that. We pass in records. We return records. Fantastic. Next, if prop isn't tracks and value, Oh, sorry. If prop isn't tracks and value isn't an empty string, update or set the album's prop to value. Uh, let me try and get that again. If prop isn't tracks and value isn't an empty string, 
Okay, let's let's do that with if statements. If uh, prop is not equals to tracks, uh, that's a string. And value is not an empty string. So we did and with during the homework. Don't worry if you if you didn't, but this is how you do and. Uh, value is not equals uh, to an empty string. Update or set that album's prop to value. So let's do that. So that album, so we got a record collection, records. We're going to pass in the ID. We're going to look up the record that has this ID. And then we're going to set the prop to be equals to value. My goodness. So records ID prop. So the prop of this record at this ID is going to be set to this value if prop is not equals to tracks and value is not an empty string. Let's do the next one. If prop is tracks, let's just do another if statement. If prop is not equals to, oh, sorry, if prop is equals to tracks, but the album doesn't have a tracks property. We did the has own property. And the and it's uh, if and sorry, um, records ID. Do you know what? I'm gonna, I'm noticing that I'm doing records ID a lot. I'm actually gonna explain. I'm sorry, I'm just gonna assign const record to be equals to records. ID. Now I've extracted this variable and now I can just use record instead of record ID. Makes the code a little bit easier to follow, I find. And record has own property. Um, but the album doesn't have a tracks property. Create an empty array and add value to it. Okay. So tracks. But if it doesn't, so we need to, so remember this returns true or false. So we want to check that this is three equals to false. Let's do it again. If prop is equals to tracks and the record having this property tracks is not true, then create an empty array and add value to it. Okay. Uh, let const tracks is equals to an empty array. Once you put const tracks as an empty array, we will tracks.push uh, value and oh my goodness. <laughs> this is quite intense, isn't it? This might eat up the rest of the lesson, I'm afraid. Let's see. Uh, well, create an empty array and add value to it. We've done that. There it is. If prop is tracks and value isn't an empty string, add value to the end of the album's existing tracks array. So if uh, value is not equals to an empty string. Oh, I am absolutely sorry. Catherine writes is getting flustered over this as well. It is absolutely flustering. Um, it's complex, and we're working through this together. I might, I'd like if I'm going too fast, don't worry. You can follow it again over the recording. We're just figuring this out together. Um, <laughs> so. Okay, if value is not an empty string, I forgot to close my bracket here. Add value to the end of the album's existing tracks array. Whew, okay. So let's do that. If value isn't an, is an empty string, delete the given prop property from the album. Uh, no, where was I? To the end of the existing tracks array. Aha. Uh -huh. So, 
record dot tracks dot push value. Assign that value to it. Who? Well, this is confusing. Okay, well, let's let's keep going. If value is an empty string, delete the given prop property from the album. In line 33, there's an extra bracket. Thank you. Okay. If value is equal to an empty string, let's record prop. Oh, delete the given prop. So we want to use delete record prop. OK. Might have to do this again. So bear with me, folks. Please. So let's, we want to update the records with record collection to be 5439 artist and ABBA. So we want to set the artist value of the record with ID 5439 to be ABBA. Do we have a record 5439? 5439. We do. No, we don't. Yes, we do. <laughs> um, I'm. Uh, we've 5439 has album title. So. Yeah, we're, we're a little bit lost here, folks, but don't worry. I'm going to spend a little bit more time, if I may, getting this absolutely right. So don't worry. I will show the whole code. We'll get there. And I probably did skip something. So bear with me, please. Um, console log record collection. This is hard, eh? Console log record Afterwards, let's take a look. Pooh, this is a big object, but okay. There's one here. This is one console. Let's just do one console log, actually. This is getting me quite lost. Okay. Artist Robert Palmer with tracks empty. 5439 is having the artist value set to ABBA. So we're almost there. Let's take another look at our code and see if we can clean it up because this is looking like quite a mess to me. So, update records with, we have a function called update records which takes four parameters, records, ID, prop, and value. We will first set a variable called record to be the record that has this ID. Hovering keeps Covering my stuff I want to show. Sorry, for everybody. Um, records with the property ID. Cool. Let's console log that, just for fun. Let me just remove this console log here so I don't get confused. So, one step at a time, folks. Const record is equals to records with property ID. We will console log this record. And we're so far so good. In fact, you know what I'm going to do? I'm actually going to delete everything here and start over because I got quite lost. Yeah, let's take our time and really make sure we get this properly. So we're console logging the record with this ID, which is giving us the one with ID 5439, which is the ABBA one. ABBA one. So far, so good. Whew. Okay. We got this, folks. Next. If let's start from the bottom up. It doesn't matter in which order we do this. If the value is an empty string, delete the given prop property from the album. I'm going to stay a little bit after class today. Sorry, folks. <laughs> now. Um Yeah, we got this. So if the value is equals to an empty string, then we will delete records using bracket notation. So if the value is an empty string, we will delete 
the property of this record. So far, so good. Let's give it a try. In fact, you know what? I'm going to move this console log down here just to make sure that when I change it, it'll look the same. It'll look as we expect. So just for fun, let's comment this out so it doesn't get run and do it on our own. Update records. Uh, record collection. I-439. We will change album title to be George. <laughs> now, if we console log again, album title is still ABBA Gold. Cool. That's because the value is not an empty string. But let's change that value to be an empty string now. It's an empty object because we have deleted this record's property. So we've got this point here working. Tick one off. Very good. Let's break it down. Now, uh, let's do the next one. If prop is, oh, sorry. If props is tracks and value is not an empty string, add value to the end album's existing tracks array. Okay. Add value to the end of the album's existing tracks array. And some folks are saying, really, else if prop is tracks. So if prop is equals to tracks and uh, the value is not an empty string, value is not equals to an empty string. Add value to the end of the album's existing tracks array. So, value, we'll add record dot tracks dot push. Remember, push adds it to the end of an array. Uh, record tracks push value. Record tracks push value. Let's give it a try. Let's change tracks and let's add in uh, Nando. That's a song I know. Cannot read properties of undefined reading push. So the problem is that tracks, if we look at the Alba object, there is no property called tracks. So I'm getting an error saying, hey, you can't push to something that doesn't exist. So this is where this other point comes in. If prop is track, so let's do an else if. Else if prop, oh, sorry. I'm going to actually remove this else if, which shouldn't do anything yet. I'm just going to have an if here. If prop is equals to tracks and a value, uh, Oh, sorry. If prop is tracks, but the album doesn't have a tracks property, create an empty array. Okay, let's do that. If prop is equals to track and um, records tracks. Oh, no, 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 no. Sorry. Um, tracks dot, I'm sorry. See, I'm confusing myself. Record dot has own property tracks is equals to false. So far, so good. So we're checking if props, if, if the prop is tracks and the record does not have the property tracks, which means like this ABBA album, it does not have a property tracks. We will say record.tracks is equals to an empty array. <sighs> Getting there. We can see here now the album title is Abba Gold, and tracks is an empty array, is an array with the object, with the string, Fernando. Ah, there really is something in the air today. <laughs> anyway, getting there, getting there. If the prop is not tracks, ah, aha. Let's add another if statement here. If the prop is not equals to tracks, with a string, please. And 
the value is not an empty string, so the value is not equals to an empty string. Update or set that album's prop to value. So record prop is equals to value. Let's give that a try. Um, artist. We're going to see here now the record is changed to have an artist, Fernando, which is not true. The artist should be ABBA, which, if you see down here, is what we have. Whew. All right. Let's delete this console log. Remember, in the YouTube video, you will be able to follow me along here. Let's delete this, what we've done here. Let's delete this comment. So now we are back where we started. Console log record collection. Scroll here. The album with ID 5439 now has an album title, Abba Gold, and an artist called Abba. I think we did it, folks. Let's take a look. Let me just remove my console log here. Run the tests. <gasps> oh no. Oh, after so it the tests failed. That's okay. Update records, record collection 2548, tracks and empty string. Tracks should not be set. Ha. And that's because when we called update records with with tracks and an empty string, let's follow our logic here. If prop is equals to tracks, which it is, and the record does not 2548, let's have a look at 2548, which it does have the property tracks. Tracks should not be set. Huh. Huh. Tracks should not be set. Huh. I think it's because I need to only do this to stop here after I delete the value because if I will delete the prop and then I'll keep going. So that's the problem. So, and you're all going to hate me, folks. But what I'm going to do is use an else statement here and put everything inside there. So all of my other else if, so blah, all of my other if statements are going to go inside this else statement. It's going to be a little bit gnarly. So if the value is an empty string, we delete and we're done. We return. Oh, hello. Forgot about you. Come here, you. Let's put you inside that else statement as well. I'm going to slowly scroll through this, folks, so we can have a look. So go start back at line 23. Function update records, record ID prop value. We set the record to be this record here. If the value is an empty string, we delete. If it's not an empty string, then we carry on here with another if statement inside that else statement. If the property is tracks and the record does not have its own property called tracks, then we set that property tracks to be an empty array. Next, if that property is tracks and the value is not an empty string, then we push that empty string into the tracks. Next, if the property is tracks, if sorry, if the property is not tracks and the value is not equals to empty string, we set that record property to be a value. We return the records. Let's test this one more time. And let's test it with that error case we were getting before. It was uh, uh, update. Records, record collection, I believe it was the 2538, I think, was it? I think so, yeah. 2548, and we'll set tracks to be an empty string. Let's see what happens. 2458, 254, oh my goodness, I forgot the number. <laughs> 2548. There we go. Now you see, folks, we all get stuck. One of the most important parts about programming is remembering that even those who have been doing this for a long time sometimes get stuck. So 2548, 
we will set tracks to be an empty string. Let's comment this out. Console log record collection. 2548. 2548 now does no longer have that tracks property. Phew, what a journey. So now, let's run the tests. And remember, folks, as Amy says very correctly here, you can use a help button to see if there's a discussion of that. So, thank you for that. Let's run the tests. We did it. I think we're going to need a triple pat here. Pat, pat, pat. My goodness. And we just got to loops. And I don't want to do loops without you folks. So I would like to propose, if everybody's okay with this, that tomorrow, instead of starting with ES6, we will instead do the loops. And if there's time, I will leave the recursion to you as homework and move on to ES6. Let's have a look at the syllabus once again, just to see where we are at and what we have left. Now, to clarify, I'm going to be very clear. I know I said that this would be our last session on, function, on the fundamentals of JavaScript, but I want to make sure that we go through loops. Loops are very important, and I don't want to skip them. So we're going to just push our schedule back ever so slightly. Please forgive me for <laughs> getting so stuck there. So tomorrow we'll do loops, and I will do loops until we get to recursion. Recursion I will leave to you. I will give you an article on uh, recursion and we'll get there. So again, tomorrow we will start right where we left off, while loops. Just a tiny pushback. Thank you for your patience, folks. As promised, before we get into Q&A, we're going to, um, I wanted to do one of the exercises that we did in the homework, and that's counting cards. So before we do Q&A, we're going to do counting cards. What a, what a journey. So what we've got here is an exercise that was homework, but we're going to do it again just to cover everything that we missed. So we've got a game of blackjack. Yes, blackjack, a player can gain an advantage over the house by keeping track of the relative number of high and low cards remaining in the deck. This is called card counting. Having more high cards remaining in the deck favors the player. Each card is assigned a value according to the table below. When the count is positive, the player should get bet high. When the count is zero or negative, the player should bet low. Now, if the card is one of these values, then it'll go up. The count will go up. If it's one of these cards, the count will stay the same. And if one of these cards, the count will go down. It will you will write a card counting function. It will receive a card parameter, which can be a number or a string, and increment or decrement the global count variable according to the card's value. See the table. We just went through that. The function will then return a string with the current count and the string bet if the count is positive or hold is if the count is zero or negative. The current count and the player's decision, bet or hold, should be separated by a single space. Now. Let's do that first part. Let's do the count changing. Now, one of the things that we learned during the homework was the switch statement. We have a function here that's called cc that takes a card parameter. And that card parameter could be 2, 3, 7, k, or a. So let's switch statement. Switch card. Inside those curly brackets, we're going to put all of the multiple things that can happen depending on the value of card. So in case the card has a value of two, we will increase it by one, count plus plus. We learned that last week. Semicolon, and very important, after you do a case, you do a break. Next, we want to see what happens if it's three. Case three, we'll do the same thing, count plus plus and break. The problem is that we're going to be doing this a lot of times. So what the switch statements allows us to do is to define multiple cases in one row, like this. So case two or case three, count goes up. K 
Case four, count goes up. Case five, count goes up. Case six, count goes up. Next, if the case is seven, eight, or nine, the, the count doesn't change. So I'll tell you what, folks, we're just going to skip that. Because if we don't want to do anything to count, why define those cases? So let's move on. If in case it's 10, or in case it's, and this works with strings, case Q, right? Q, case K, case A. And we do make it go down, so it's count minus minus and break. So let's do, let's um, console log count. It's zero. Let's call CC, call CC one. <gasps> now, what did I do? We let count is equals to zero. Depending on the card, we either plus plus, break, or minus minus, break. CC, oh, one. <laughs> one doesn't do anything. <laughs> That's why nothing changed. My bad. Let's try four. The count goes up by one. Let's try 10. Minus one. So that's how that works. Next, depending if count is positive, so if count is bigger than zero, no, yes, if it's bigger than zero, we return count plus et. Very important, the white space here. Let's try it again. CC, let's console log CC2. Bet. That is one bet. <laughs> if we do 10, it's going to say change me because we haven't done the other part. If it's not more than zero, which means else, we return count plus and a string. Is it hold? It is hold. Negative one, hold. We can remove this change me, and that's how we do that. The tests, and that works. Ah, now let's do some questions. Sorry to leave you all hanging, folks. Please give me any questions you might have, and I've been sweating so hard that I forgot to drink some water. Uh, Q&A session, yes. I'll stick around and answer any questions you all might have. Uh, if any, of course. Oh, my goodness. Anybody, any questions so far? Please feel free to throw them into the chat. If you don't have questions, oh, oh, oh. How, ooh, okay. Um, how did I get started with software development? I um, started in university. I was curious about coding. I, I did some coding classes in high school and I enjoyed them and I started it at university and I just kept going from there. Thanks for the question. Ah. <laughs> We're all recovering from the previous exercise. Believe me, so am I. Um, what other questions we got? Is counting cards a project? I guess technically it's a real life application of our concept. Oh, why am I blocking this? It's a real life op application of our, of the concepts we've learned so far. Um, so that's how, so I guess, I guess it is kind of a project. <laughs> um, did learning recursion come naturally to you or did it come with tenacity? Definitely came with tenacity. In case you're curious, folks, recursion and the way it works is recursion allows you to call a function from the same function. It sounds even more inception -y than before, and we'll cover that tomorrow. Ah. Let's see what we what else we got. Um Oh, 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 
what tool can we use for JS coding? Uh, I definitely recommend using a code editor. The most commonly used one right now is uh, VS Code or Visual Studio Code. Um, super commonly used by everybody and very much supporting JavaScript development. Hope that helps. Um, Ikina asks, I would like to ask what is the best way to improve myself in some uh, oneself in software development so as to not get too stuck in so many tutorials online? Um, this is going to depend on how you best learn. Some people learn best by learning in groups. Some people learn best by themselves, learning online pri uh, privately at their own pace. For example, these videos and tutorials can totally be consumed off uh, <laughs> after the stream at your own pace. Um, yeah. Uh, it's tempting to do lots of tutorials online. In my case, I find that sticking to one and seeing it through to, through to the end one at a time helps me, but your mileage may vary. What else we got? What do you recommend to install to make more exercises outside Free Code Camp? Um, there's lots of places to do exercises. One of my favorites is exorcism.org. I will ex. I'm going to type this into the chat. Exorcism.org is very fun. I've recommended it in the Discord. It's a lot of fun for doing. Uh, coding exercises in a myriad of languages. So if that's your thing, go for it. Um, what else we got? I'm a little bit, sorry, scrolling here through all of the questions. Uh, Rajesh asks, is JavaScript gonna be more scarier than this? If I've made the impression today that JavaScript is scary, then I apologize. It is daunting. And it takes time to get into these specific things. And going through so much concepts is definitely exhausting, even for me, now, even nowadays. What I recommend is take your time, ask lots of questions. And folks, I'm so happy that everybody's asking so many questions, because this is how we best learn. By me explaining my your fellow learners, if you know the answer, please contribute to the Discord, to the forums. The links are through the forum which you see here at the bottom, absolutely. Patience is key here as well. Almron asks, what is the difference between let object and const object? Um, it, the same difference that there is between let or const any variable. So const can only be defined once, and let can only be declared once. So if you let a variable, you can change its value multiple times, whereas with const, you can only change its value you can only assign its value once. Um, let's see what else we got. Can we use objects to solve the same exercise about cards? Yes, actually, I think so. Why not? We could have an object made up of multiple properties, 10, J, K, Q, and A. No, wait, maybe not. Maybe not because we need to dynamically change that count variable. Maybe in theory you can. I'd be interested if anybody, my brain is absolutely fried and I'm not sure I could do it right now on the spot and I want to give, but hey, try it out. And if you figure it out, put it in the Discord or the forum, please. Richard asks, I keep getting confused when we have to call functions. Is there a way to remember what that means? Hope that makes sense. Totally makes sense. When you're, I'll show you what I mean. Let's, let me delete everything I have here and let's define a function. Uh, I'm so stuck on dogs. So let's go with bark. So that's a function we're defining. And all it does is, re is console log bark. Now, right now, it does nothing because we haven't called the function yet. If we do bark, it doesn't actually call the function either. The function, the contents of the function, that's what calling it does. It runs the contents of that function. So once I put in these smooth brackets, it prints out bark. Hope that clarifies. Um, if you're still confused, totally check out the MDN resources. MDN web docs is a fantastic resource for this. What else we got? What else we got? Um, Looks like objects are widely used in JavaScript. Does this make JavaScript an object-oriented language? I don't. 
So JavaScript works with something called properties, which I don't know if that technically makes it an object-oriented language. You can do object-oriented programming with JavaScript. If you don't know what object-oriented programming is, don't worry. We're going to get to that in this boot camp. Whew. So what else we got? Uh, what is the difference? Uh, da, da, da. You mentioned during the weekend Q&A that you favor Vim. What do you see as the appeal of Vim over a modern IDE? Uh, in case you're curious, Vim is a program for running, um, for writing code that runs in your uh, that runs in the terminal in the command line. It's an alternative to VS Code. I like it. I don't recommend it because it works in the terminal. There's no mouse. It's just keyboard. And a lot of people say it's very difficult to get out of. It is an acquired taste, as I would put it gently. Um, I got used to it early in my career and I just stuck with it. I actually recommend VS Code over Vim. So, uh, if is Exorcism ideal for your first programming language? I can't say that definitively because I haven't done Exorcism as my for my first programming language. Um, I can see how it would help me learn a new programming language. Um, yeah, so. Maybe, folks, if you've done exorcism, please uh, please speak up in the chat. I think it'd be great. And if not, Discord or forum. Thanks for your question. Oh, I'm going to answer this question by O'Neill Richards. How often do you Google problems during a work day? Dozens. Sometimes hundreds. As you saw today, I got stuck. And if I needed to Google something, I would Google it. It's totally acceptable. And I'm going to be very clear, even senior software developers Google things multiple times a day. So what else we got? Um, could we go through the golf code exercise together today? Maybe. I will briefly cover it if I may. I'm going to stick around for more questions, so no worries. Let's go through golf code. That was another real life application of it. Sorry, I'm scrolling kind of fast, just trying to find golf code. So if you've done the homework, this might seem familiar, but, and please give me clues as we go. So in the game of golf, each hole has a par, meaning the average number of strokes or hits a golfer is expected to make in order to sink the ball into the hole to complete the play. Depending on how far above or below par your strokes are, there is a different nickname. And that nickname is going to be what we are. So depending on how many strokes we are relative to par, we will return one of these strings. Let's try the first one. It's quite, um, let's, it's, it's quite straightforward. If, so if the number of strokes is one, we return the string hole in one. That means we got, we hit the ball and it got into the hole in one hit, hole in one. So if, strokes is e3 equals to one, we will return all in one. So far, so good. Else if, and here comes the next one, the no, if the number of strokes is less than or equals to par minus two, we return eagle. So if the strokes is less than or equals to the number of par minus two, then we return Eagle. I'm only going to do a couple of these. Else if. Again, the number of strokes is equals to par minus one. So whatever par is, subtract one with that from that. If they're equal to strokes, we return, what do we return? Birdie. Return birdie. So we just keep adding these else if statements until here. And then otherwise, sorry, if Else, if it's bigger than par plus three, you return the string, go home. So that's how that works. I hope, I hope I, I gave a brief summary of it. I hope it kind of gets you going into the right rhythm. Um, Sammy J asks a good question. Can switch do everything and more than what el if and else can do? In my opinion, they're interchange they they can be used the same way but there are cases where for example switch is a little bit easier to read and follow but if and else is a little bit more flexible for example i don't think that in switch you can do bigger than or equals to a uh, bigger than or smaller than for example so in those cases using if and else makes more sense ah <sighs> 
Richard Torres asked, I heard from developers that a lot of developers just copy and paste code without truly understanding what it does and just hope it works. Do you feel that is a general thing? Uh, let me take a sip of water first. Ah, uh, so I'm of multiple thoughts here. <laughs> it is totally like, even as a senior developer, I have copy pasted code from say, if you're familiar with Stack Overflow, it's a website for getting um, solutions where people ask questions about code. I have copied stuff from there. It helps me unlock the part where it, something works. But what I like to do after that is change the code a little bit, refactor it, as the, the term is refactoring, to be able to say, OK, what works here? What, what is it that's going on here so that I can unlock my understanding of it? So copy pasting code is absolutely fine and sometimes encouraged in order to unlock a part of your brain where it says, ah, I understand what's happening here now. I hope that clarifies. Could I show more examples of objects in real life? Uh, sure. I mean, what we can do with objects is temporarily store complex pieces of data. And I think let's let's uh, let's look at another example. Um, okay, let me let me delete everything here, and let's define an object called user. Um, and this user will consist of some username. My username, for example, on Twitch is Ola Soy Milk. Uh, it's a terrible joke, by the way, if you don't speak Spanish. It means, hello, I am milk. <laughs> anyway, um, password is a password. I'm not going to tell you what my password is. I'm not. I'm that foolish. <laughs> um, contain email. Email at address.com. Um, let's see what else we got. Age, no, date of birth, the birth there. This way we can store an, a set of several users in this object so that when we're working with a user, say a user wants to update their profile on a website, you take that object, change something of it, pass it back over. So that's a real life application of an object that I can think of. Just we ask, are objects mutable? Yes. Yes, they are. Um, we've been doing that today, in fact. We're changing the values of the properties of some objects. Will this bootcamp cover practice with Node.js? No. Um, there are other exercises. There are other, um, what's the term? I'm sorry. There are other places in, in Free Code Camp where you will find these. Um, this kind of... Uh, Series of exercises. I'm sorry. It looks like <laughs> I'm pretty brain fried. Um, yeah, there are other parts of this where you you will find these exercises. But for this bootcamp, we're just going to focus on ju the language of JavaScript. What else? The difference between a dictionary and an object. I don't know if in JavaScript they're all that different. If I'm honest. For example, what you see here is a dictionary of properties that where you can look up a series of values. Um, so in JavaScript, I don't think they're different. Are there dictionaries in JavaScript? I'm not even sure. Um, if you know folks in the chat, please tell us. So should I get used to declaring variables with let? Um, if you're going to be deciding between let and var, I highly recommend let over var. Um, there are some great resources that I posted last week in the chat about the difference between const let and var. I highly recommend looking into those. Um, so I feel like a couple of these questions are uh, repeating themselves. And uh, no more. Let's see what we get. Is it always the case to Google things? Should we just be familiar with the concepts, but Google them along the way without memorizing? This depends on how you best work. What, what helps me is to understand what I'm doing, but sometimes the names of things will slip my mind and that's when I'll look things up. I hope that clarifies. What else we got? What 
else we got? Are objects related to object-oriented programming in JavaScript? Uh, yes. Uh, we can absolutely do object-oriented programming with objects in JavaScript. Um, if that's uh, that's going to be something that we'll cover on later on in the bootcamp. Am I teaching JS or learning it? I'm teaching it. <laughs> but learning is an ongoing process, so there are always parts of JavaScript that one will learn. Ah. <sighs> See what else we got. Is exorcism more beginner friendly than hacker rank? I'm I'm afraid I'm not familiar with hacker rank, uh, so I can't tell you <laughs> for sure. So um, let's see what other questions we got. Linda's asking, will you be helping us through the front-end development after this course? Um, the, I can't promise anything yet, but that's something I would like to do. Ah. <laughs> hey, don't worry. Don't, absolutely no, um, no apologies needed. <laughs> All fine. Ah, we're learning JavaScript together as a whole ensemble. So are we going to learn TypeScript? Not in this boot camp. If you're not familiar with it, TypeScript is a programming language built on top of JavaScript. And with that, folks, I think we're going to call it a day. We have been through a lot. It will be, it was a lot. Please review these exercises at your own pace, at your own time. Remember, if you get stuck on anything, that's what the forums and that's what the Discord is for. So just carry on and we'll get through this, everybody. We are learning and we are patient. <laughs> so now, with that, I say thank you all so much for joining today's lessons. And as always, keep learning, keep having fun, and we got this. Take care, everybody. Have a good day.